Hello everybody again and welcome to another episode of Stock Talk. I am your host Mike. Kameo's not here because uh, I got a late start and he's uh, in the rack at the People's Republic of New York. So he's there rolling around in the upstate uh, New York there. Uh, so I've got a decent show planned for you today. We've got a lot of exciting things. I just like to say hello infidels, hello uh, to your army of apes, and hello traders. Hopefully you're doing or I should give you a big old hello, infidels, traders, and apes. How's that? So yeah, that's your big uh, introduction there. So uh, first off, we're going to go into, before we go into today's stocks, we're going to go into uh, a plug there because I'd like to, anytime I, I see any uh, news there, we need to cover a little financial news just because it's not, uh, it does affect the markets. And so uh, we're going to dive into an article that I'm going to uh, put in on from uh, Tyler Durden from uh, Zero Hedge. And that'll be posted on to the video there so you can go ahead and read that because you need to have some of these articles here sometimes uh, to go to so you can get the inside info as far as what's happening before it hits mainstream. Because usually the alphabets are usually five to a week or two behind as far as that goes uh, before it hits mainstream as far as the mainstream people, not like the financial magazines and things like that. They're usually on the ball pretty quick, but some of your uh, some of your other uh, news organizations in the alphabets, they're just not uh, keeping up there. So uh, one of the one of the uh, items that uh, the title of the article is three key takeaways from the Fed meeting. Uh, Tyler Durden uh, covered that, and it's important because it's going to affect the market. Okay, so what he said confirming uh, what we learned is the official tapering to begin in November or in the end of July uh, from the FOMC today paved the way for taper to start for two months. When it said a community of judges, a moderation of pace to asset purchases may be warranted. Now, tapering, what would you say is tapering? Because a lot of us don't know out there uh, what tapering is. So for some of you that uh, don't know what uh, tapering is, tapering is the gradual slowing of the pace of the Fed's uh, large-scale asset purchases. Once the tapering is complete, the Feds may go to reduction of the size of the balance sheet. The aim is to slowly remove monetary stimulus. So uh, that's your update on tapering. So in, in this Fed meeting, uh, they, they pulled out a summary of economic pro, uh, projections, SEP, and showed an even split of o, uh, FOMC members with, between zero and one hike in 2022 and slightly the OIS implied rate. And I'm going to have a graph posted in uh, uh, from, the, new, from the, the, the news page there so you can actually see the statistics they put up. Uh, they said, additionally, the median uh, projection implied for three additional hikes for 2023, uh, 2024, and as shown at the chart above the market, which is the price is just 1%, uh, Fed funds rate cut is 2024 and the uphill climb to catch up to the Fed. Curiously, in the commentary of FOMC, Goldman appears to be hinted at that uh, a bit of mutiny inside the Fed. Yes, there's a little bit, the, the cats are in a little bit of a fuss there. According to Goldman's uh, Jan... Hyzatus, our best guess is that the chair Powell did not project a hike in 2022. Is Powell about to cede control to the far more hawkish regional feds? Well, yeah, probably probably so, I'd say, but we'll see what happens. Is a postmortem the FOMC B, uh, B of A chief economist, Michelle Meyer, said, one of the whole Fed meeting was another move in the more hawkish direction. Even more if the bank uh, uh, clarified that this is uh, still a dovish Fed that is highly committed to achieving higher inflation and a hot economy, but the face of the supply side constraints and the growing strait of persistent inflation, it appears these objectives could be, could be met, uh, met earlier. Uh, they maintain that why Goldman was widely often forecast for hiatus notes, the median dot implied three additional hikes in 2023, the three more in 2024, and implying the three half total hikes before 2023, and the six half uh, hikes, we are expected to have five uh, at this meeting. These are the key takeaways from the meeting. Uh, at noted above, the taper or should be tracked uh, to announce in November it could be completed mid-year. When a taper signal in the statement was vague, may soon be warranted. Chairman Powell uh, clarified that the press conference that they had could be ready in upcoming meeting in November. Uh, so there was significant disappointment in the employment data or financial market disruption, and this confirms what they said two weeks ago, that tapering will begin November and end in July. So in this meeting, they also, uh, B of A noted that the, the Fed has become more concerned about the persistent price pressures 
And uh, although critical tests will begin for long-run inflation expectations, which remain anchored, monitoring the supply development side will be critical and the supply side remains constrained for both goods and for labor. Uh, the market reaction, uh, the rates market interpreted by the Fed communications as hawkish and the yield curve flattened five-year rates to uh, higher than 30, 30 year rates for 2B, S, and lower. So you have all those uh, graphs there. So what, do, what in all of this, what does this mean to you, okay? What, what would you say that, why do you care? Well, I'm going to tell you why you should care. So what it basically means is they're trying to uh, level things out uh, without uh, doing any more harm than good. But the problem is, is like Momo Chaser uh, quoted in this article. If you go back to the comments and read it, it has one of the best quotes out of this. The economy will get all the help it needs, according to Powell. But he says, oh, hell no. If the debt hits $30 trillion, school's out. Powell's going to crush every pension, 401k, and house in America. Turn every city into a giant smoking crater, and he's going to run naked victory lap down Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay, guys, the first stock we have is AMLH, AMLH, America Leisure Holdings. Last tick was 0 0.0034. Going through with the, the chart for the yearly chart, this thing's been trending uh, between, uh, you know, half a cent to two cents uh, throughout the year. Uh, it's been on the promotion list. It's back on the promotion list again. Uh, some eyes are talking about it. We're going to jump on and see why they're talking about it. Uh, it looks like it's trending a little bit almost uh, to uh, almost to the four cent range. Uh, so we're going to go into uh, what would you say uh, they do here? Uh, they engage in investments in energy market. The company was founded in June 13, 2000, and is headquartered in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now we did cover this before, but we're going to cover it again. Uh, we're not going to go into charts and analysis because that's what some some uh, shows do is they just go into charts and analysis and things like that about it. You can go off and do that on your own. What we're here to is to give you a little information and tell you about the company. As far as some people say, well, I uh, I, I know this from going on to, uh, uh, I could go do this myself. Well, go ahead and do it yourself. I'm just giving you the lazy person's way if you want to just uh, listen to what they do. And then you don't have to go and do that. But you can go and do whatever you want and uh, whenever you want. So what you need to know about this company, it's currently going through uh, restructure. So as far as uh, about uh, them with DNA Brands, that's a holding company focused on cutting edge markets. Since 2020, the company has engaged in solar, uh, digital marketing and sales. Also in January 2021, the company acquired a majority ownerships of DNA Tags, uh, a blockchain verified medicinal packaging company soon to be actively marketed in various medicinal sectors. Uh, also about American Leisure Incorporated, is American Leisure Incorporated is a holding company that's in the process of reinstating current demo, uh, state of domicile. Furthermore, the company plans to restructure. So guys, with uh, American Leisure Holdings, uh, the CEO mentioned that they're uh, in a process of a corporate cleanup uh, in an operational segment uh, for solid intentions and plans for reinstating the company uh, in the state of Nevada without uh, anticipated hindrances. So a lot of this information you can find at EN News Desk. And they also have a, a YouTube video posted with the, the CEO there. In recent YouTube video, Adrian, uh, the, the CEO there, discussed the strategic uh, roadmap of both DNA Brands Incorporated and American Leisure Incorporated. He emphasized the potential mergers and the joint ventures of the brands that would undergo uh, as far as uh, and how it would benefit the shareholders and the consumers at large. Keeping in mind that the shareholders are one of the most important parts of the company, Adrian also uh, explain the existing share structure and how it'd be uh, evolved in the next couple months. So obviously with uh, the the two divergence of the companies coming together and other uh, acquisitions that they are making, this is one to watch. Now when do you get in? That's when you uh, figure out. I would uh, look to see where the buy point is and see what they're doing and then find your buy point and get in. Uh, when, uh, as far as more information comes out about them, where they're going, and to, just to make sure it's not another De Niro raising uh, uh, stock there, because that's like I said, what we do here is we give the information. We're not propping up any type of company or anything like that. Okay, guys, going on to Stockwitz, because the Alphabet News doesn't have anything that's uh, up to date there as far as its, its old information. It's still, uh, as the week goes on, you could see more things popping on the promotion list there. 
Uh, going on to Stockwitz, that's where the real traders hang out there. Uh, you have uh, Big Butcher says, AMLH, great setup and easy 10-bagger with the merger news uh, Friday. So uh, you have that there. That was 41 minutes ago. Okay, so pouring that, Perp says, wouldn't want to be on the sidelines when the merger news drops on Friday. So there's rumors going on on Stockwitz and out on the, on the alphabets and things like that that there's a merger news that's coming. So we'll have to see what happens on that. The monsters are still waking up. AMLH ran through the threes, half a penny by, e, by, uh, by the EOW there. Uh, Rudy says AMLH has been heating up. Uh, AMLH adding over one petty soon. That's uh, SD Investment says that. Holding this one at least a year looks great. Uh, let's see, AMLH sitting up the first prospect today. Still super cheap. Run over one cent news drop. Want to bring uh, some profits here. Just moving yesterday and went pink, uh, current to the pink. That's Big Bags 214. Uh, on the fourth highest volume on the stocks under 30 cents, huge future for Pennyland is definitely heating up. So some of you might ask, and well, if you're new to the show, why, why, do, why do we cover this and why do we do stock wits? Well, you actually want opinions. I know some people say, well, you're just reading what the guy says uh, in the comment section. I want, I'm gauging the, as far as uh, the noise and trying to get the signal as far as what people are saying about the stock so other traders know what they're saying. And people are, are smart enough to figure out what's BS and what's not BS, what people are saying. I don't need to discuss what people are saying and what they aren't. That's you, that's you, you decide what they're saying. I mean, sometimes I'll throw in uh, a, a smart ass remark or something like that, but it is what it is. So we have AMLH. I just bought 200k shares and it's not a lot, but it's something. Yeah, some bucks is better than no bucks. I agree. Uh, that was uh, J9266. Figgy, uh, Figgy with it says, when this hits a dollar, I'm a millionaire. Well, good for you. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of those I have. And like I said, yeah, that when those hit, it is what it is. But sometimes you got to wait on that. Uh, nothing 100% just popped up on the scanners holding companies on fire. It's interesting to see how far she goes. I'm holding this one for long term. Lots of good things in the works. So uh, as the weeks as the week goes on, keep an eye on this. Watch it on Stockwitz. Watch it everywhere there, uh, and see what happens and where it pops and where it ends up with this merger news on Friday. So we're out on this one because uh, we really don't have a website because they're doing the merger and things like that. But we're just going to keep everything in mind. We're out. Okay, guys, the next stock we have uh, trending on uh, Stockwitz and trending out throughout the markets is BB. BlackBerry and Corp uh, LTD, sorry, their last tick after hours was $10.15. Looking at this one, January 21, uh, you had this this guy uh, passed in the $20 range, almost to the $30 range. You saw some uh, pushback on uh, around March and May, uh, brought you back up in July, and then you're down a little bit below $10, and you're seeing a little peak up there. Well, back in uh, here, what would you say they do here? Uh, they engage in providing the intelligence security software service to enterprises and governments. The firm levels artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning to deliver solutions in areas of cybersecurity, safety, data, privacy solutions, and also focus on endpoint security, endpoint management encryption. That's never going away. And the thing is, is that uh, with these guys, uh, obviously they're getting uh, paid per endpoint as well. Uh, if some of you are not familiar with endpoints, uh, that's uh, obvi obviously the security system per uh, unit to where it's uh, installed on. So that's just a, a little IT talk there for you from an IT person. Uh, the company was founded by Michael uh, Lazardus and uh, James Lawrence Basile and Douglas Ferion on, uh, if I butchered it, it is what it is, my apologies, March 7th, 1984 in Waterloo, Canada. Okay, going on to the website, well, it looks like a $10 uh, stock website. It looks very decent there and, and good. Uh, you have uh, what, the, what they're involved in is unified endpoint security, uh, embedded systems, transportation asset tracking, uh, unified endpoint management, automotive, consumer products, and critical ma event management. Uh, with that, guys, uh, this thing is almost economic proof. Uh, based on what they do, they constantly have a revenue stream. Uh, owning an IT company like I do myself, I can tell you that uh, as far as like with shortages in parts, things like that happen. But uh, software fixes, you're going to uh, you're constantly making dineros all the time. It's reoccurring revenue all the time. 
uh, as far as with uh, that. And so when you have a company that has endpoints, uh, security systems and cybersecurity uh, systems, uh, you're going to constantly get that reoccurring revenue all the time. And it's almost uh, foolproof or safe for what they do. So going into uh, the website, uh, they're creating a mobile workforce providing user security so they'll be productive whenever and wherever. Now the trusted protection is everywhere from cars to mobile phones to laptops, just to name a few. It's huge, uh, everything that they're involved in. Okay, so one of their products is work from home with security from the office. Empower your employees to think, uh, in, sorry, empower your employees to work remotely with their devices. Broader work from home policies and requirements are becoming a reality. Make your own uh, with not sacrificing productivity and security. Uh, secure access for uh, desktops and laptops. Uh, BlackBerry offers everything from desktops that can turn any home laptop and remote work laptop. There's no uh, need to manage devices and managing or borrowing. All it takes is uh, traffic to securely routed data encrypted. Home workers get a uh, productivity suite for apps. Uh, and that's the other thing is they uh, sell by license per computer, which is bank money. Uh, as well and the licenses aren't that they're cheap so just the, just to just to throw that out there there maximize productivity reduce costs of unparalleled security blackberry offers a containerized environment for the enables employees productivity without the complexity of high cost traditional uh, VT, vpns or virtual desktop infrastructure uh, has all their uh, microsoft uh, email contacts uh, documents things like that uh, onboarding and offboarding endpoint uh, security and data paths uh, and they have their demos just like they do for uh, team viewer and things like that. Looks like they're also offering asset tracking and engineering intelligence. Uh, asset tracking made simple, testing made free. You can review up to five complementary Black Bar radar, BlackBerry Radar H2 units to evaluate uh, asset utilization costs to improve the services. Purposes built devices. BlackBerry has a complete asset tracking solution providing uh, reliable visibility, trailer, chassis, and contained uh, equipment. The rugged devices are easy to install, low maintenance, and long-term lasting uh, minimizes operational disruptions and maxi maximizes your return on investment. Uh, introducing BlackBerry Radar H2, the, the next generation of monitoring solutions, non-powered transportation, and logistical assets. Uh, they have that on there. The Radar 2 is the next evolution of wireless sensors adding the capabilities that are already robust BlackBerry H2 solution. You also have dashboard reporting, uh, the powerful analytics and uh, actionable insights to easy use portal. The Radar Online portal includes custom dashboards, reports, tools, and empowers a team to manage assets based on the rich information provided solution. Want to check out more? You can go to the website and then see uh, their Mapolito they got there. They have trailer tracking, they have chassis and flatbed tracking, Intermodel container tracking, equipment uh, tracking, uh, rail car tracking, and monitoring, and much more. Uh, one, one, uh, Kurt uh, Reitz writes, I'm saving 30 to five, 35 to 45 minutes a day averaging my drivers because radar and anything I could do to shorten a person's workday, going from 65 to 70 hours per week to 55 to 60 hours a week, all because of going because... To me, whoever drives is the one that's going to win the game. Isn't that the truth? And uh, people serve as profit, 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 profit. Looks like going in here, we have mobile threat defense, MTD. Uh, they also have endpoint, which I went into. Endpoint is security system per unit of what you're trying to protect uh, in your, uh, you know, computers, laptops, desktops, uh, other other uh, devices there, your phones there. They also have the uh, response uh, the EDRs, the endpoint detection and response, uh, un unified endpoint manager, protect your work and ability to pr uh, produce everywhere. Uh, they also have the production, the secure productivity acts to, to check on the workers and deals like that. Uh, I know that's a lot of people don't like that. So they have, they have tons of different products. And uh, like I said, as long as the management keeps good, it's almost economic proof. But we're actually going to go see what the real traders are saying. We're not going to go into the alphabets tonight uh, just because, uh, you know, we got tomorrow's show. We can go into uh, other things there, but we've covered enough of this. Let's just go to the stock wits and see what the real traders are saying for now. Okay, guys, going on to stock wits because that's where the real traders are at. I'll uh, say that this is from AARC says, I will say the stock will settle back on the $10 range in about a month sooner. We saw this coming in the next few days. 
Uh, tomorrow's going to be huge, and by most of the, most all in whole, that's Farley Day. Uh, let's see here. We have a plug from the Epic Times. It says, New York City will invest $75 million in infrastructure and electric vehicles and charging with infrastructure. I know what people are excited about the infrastructure. I get it, the deal there. But uh, let's just say, guys, that uh, we'll see what happens of how much money that actually goes into infrastructure. Don't carry the cooler for any politicians or the media. They're all in the same game together. Uh, they're obviously not on your side. I would err towards most of the money going to waste and then some actually going into infrastructure. You cannot put your faith in any politician. I don't care who or what politician it is there. Uh, don't carry the cooler for any of them. And don't project what the alphabets are saying because they're all in the pocket uh, of, uh, both parties there. So, uh, going into this, uh, we have my literacy is muddled, uh, due to the technology inserting of the words of my behalf. I've said bears the 27th should be nears. Uh, we have, let's see, a bunch of, uh, garbage and, uh, we're going to be out on, uh, this year. So, uh, not too much, uh, other information there as far as what's popping up. So, don't make it a dog show and good night now!